Okay. So there's a few things that we actually going to learn today. We are not only going to learn how can we generate a QR code. So we're going to learn how can we create a Google form and then type of question available in the Google form. How can you duplicate, import and copy a form? Okay. And then rules available for type of questions. Okay. This one is not for every type of question. There's only three type of question. You can, uh, we are going to go through that. And then the future is available in the Google form. How can you share your Google form? And last but not least, we are going to learn how can we generate a QR code for the Google form we just created. Okay. So the very first thing we are going to do here is we are going to create our Google form. So normally I will suggest to create the form straight from um, straight from the drive. Okay. The reason why, because if you are creating the form straight from the drive, you know the location of your Google form. So it's very important for you to know where is your Google form. If you want to edit your form, if you want to share your form, if you know where's the location, so it will be easier for you to find the Google form. Okay, to do that, open up your drive, click on the new button on the left side. Okay, then bring your cursor to more and then you will see Google form. Okay, click on Google form and then from there, it will open up a new tab of a Google form. So here, what you are, you, are, you need to do now, you need to rename your form. The reason why, because um, if you leave your form as a, as an untitled form and then later on, it will be hard for you to look for this form. Okay, so again, so after you create your form, can we ensure that you immediately rename your form? To do that, you just click on the untitled form and then you just key in the new name for it and then that's it. It will be renamed. Okay, so here is will be the name for our uh, Google form today. The name for our Google form will be sample. So here um, where you can create your first question. So by default, the first question there will be a multiple choice, but don't worry, you can change it. But by default, if you create a new form, it will come out like this. Okay. So the type of question will be uh, multiple choice and here untitled question. So the same with uh, when you are trying to rename the form. So what you need to do, you just click here, untitled question, and then you can start typing your question. Okay. So here you can start typing your question. The next up. So here you just type in the question. And then if you wish to add more question, okay, to your form, you are looking for the plus button. Okay, you are looking for the plus button on your left. So here in the question, on the top here, there's a plus. Okay, there's a plus button to add question. Once you click on the plus button, so it will add another question for you. Okay, so now this is the first question. So here is the second question. Okay. Here is the second question. Again, by default, it will be multiple choice, but you can always change that. Okay, so when you plus, uh, when you click on the plus sign, it will create a new question. So that is how you add a question. To delete a question, because maybe sometimes you click uh, add question by accident. So you are just looking for this bin icon. Okay, you're looking for this pin icon. So you click on that icon and then this question will be deleted. Okay, and this question will be deleted if you accidentally add another question and you don't want it. So what you can do, you are looking for this bin icon, just click on that and when it will delete these questions. So let's just now create a new Google form. So I'm going to create my new form from here so that it's easy for me to know where's the location of the form. So just click on new. Okay, once you click on new, bring your cursor to more and then you will be able to view Google form. So click on Google form, okay, from your drive. New, more, Google form, click on that. It will open up a new form for you. Okay, by default, you will have one question 
and then the name of the form will be untitled form okay so you just click here and then just give it a name okay i'm just going to give it a name demo okay and then here it will be automatically changed because this will be the title of the form so these two will be the same okay so here untitled question you can start typing your question let's say i'm just going to put number one I'm sorry number one yeah it will be my first question and then i want to add another question look for this okay you are looking for this sign okay this is the question on the left plus sign add question so here is question number two if you want to remove it this is the one that you're looking for delete okay the bin delete so now question uh question number two is gone because i already deleted so now i only have one question type of questions available in google form okay so there's a few types of question available in google form so if you want the user to type their answer you have short answer and paragraph option if you want the user the respondent uh, to choose from a list you have multiple choice you have checkbox and drop down if you want your respondent to upload a file you have option file upload if you want a uh, respondent to choose from the grid okay so normally this one is if you want them to uh, grade you how good you are so we use choose from the grid you have linear scale multiple choice grid and also checkbox grid and uh, last section will be date and time so i'm going to show you one by one what is the difference between this type of question number one this is short answer for short answer so normally if you notice i'm not sure if you can see it clearly so the length of the uh, of the space given here is only this uh, this long it's not that long okay so normally this type of question is suitable if you're asking for name, a short answer that you need from the user, okay? For the name, so it's suitable to use this one, short answer question. For the paragraph, if you notice, the length for the empty space given is more longer than the short answer, okay? If you notice, the space given here is longer than the short answer. So this one, if you need... Um, the user to key in more information so you uh, can choose with go ahead with the paragraph okay so here is the multiple choice okay for multiple choice user can only choose one for multiple choice user can only choose one if you give them more than one option user can choose one but here if you give them checks box user can uh, tick more than one option Okay, if you give them chat box, user can tick more than one option. Okay, similar with this one, there are, you have two options, but then if you are using a multiple choice, user can only choose one. But if you decide to use chat box question, user can just choose more than one. Okay, they can just tick more than one option. If drop down, so normally I will say this one is for gender female or male so because when user click on the drop down okay for here example when the user click on the drop down they can choose either one option okay it's almost similar with the with the multiple choice you give them more than one option and they can only choose one okay you give them more than one option they can only choose one it's just the way how it present it will be present like this one so user need to click on the drop down so the option will come out and the user need to choose either one okay so this one is for the drop down as for the file upload you are asking the user to upload a file okay you're asking user to upload the file and then a folder will be created in uh in the in the folder where you create the form let's say here yeah Let's go here so this is the where i create demo okay this is where i create demo when i created a questions here is my demo when i created a question 
that require file upload, okay. So here, it's file upload. So um, Google will create automatically a folder, okay. This is one just created by Google, not me. So Google will automatically create a folder for you. So all the file uploaded, so when the when your respondent upload a file so here, let me just preview you. Okay, when your respondent upload add file, so all these files will go here in this folder. Okay, all the file will be saved here in this folder. That is for file upload. So it will be in one location. So it's easy for you to look for the file uploaded by your respondent. So here is the um, for the linear scale. Again, linear scales is if you need a user to select a value in a range. Okay. So generally it's used to measuring a rating level of certification. So here I give them options. This is a uh, this is linear scale. So linear scale you can choose one, two. The maximum will be ten. Okay, the maximum will be ten. So here number one. This is the minimum. Okay, the minimum. And then two. This is the maximum. The maximum is ten. Okay. So number one it will show on the left. So it, this one is the maximum. It will show on the right. The minimum will show on the left. This is the maximum here. We show on the right. So this is the scale one, two, three, four, five. So user just choose one. Okay, this is linear scale question. User can just choose one. So here for multiple choice grid. Okay, for example, here you only can choose uh, for one question. Okay, you only have one question. But if you go with multiple choice grid, you can have more than uh, more than one uh, questions. So here again, this is the scale you can give uh, maybe um, disappointed, sad, happy or angry. And then here is the question and the user just choose, just click on the box. Okay, the user just click on the box. Either they are happy, sad, angry. Okay, this is for multiple choice grid. So here, um, they have more than one question. Linear scale is suitable if you are asking only for one uh, question. But if you wish to ask more than one, use multiple choice grid. Okay, so here row one means question one. Row two is question two. So here, check spot grid. Okay, for here, they can just choose one. But check spot grid, for one question, they can choose more than one. Okay, for check spot grid here, if you're looking for this box button, okay, so user can choose more than one option. So either they can choose their set happy and angry at the same time. So here for the date, so for the date is um, user just choose a date, a mini calendar will pop up and then they just choose particular date, okay. Yeah. Okay, for the, I have a question untuk soal selidik. Okay, if you have more than satu soalan, if you if you ada lebih daripada satu soalan, um, you boleh guna yang untuk multiple choice grid ni. Okay, if you lebih daripada satu soalan. Tapi kalau you label you, you nak tanya satu soalan je yang perlukan skill ni, you guna linear scale. Tapi kalau soalan you ada banyak yang perlukan dia pilih happy tak happy, you guna multiple choice grid. Tapi kalau you nak bagi dia pilih lebih daripada satu pilihan kat sini, you boleh guna textbook grid. Kejap lagi, I pun akan tunjuk demo semua perbezaan ni. Okay, so dia bergantung, ke, uh, depends on your questions. Banyak how many and what information that you want to get from the respondent. Because it's uh, totally different on you as well. Okay, so kat sini date tadi, you tekan je nanti mini calendar akan keluar, user boleh pilih. So as for the time, question pula, user just key in masa je. Pukul berapa, pukul berapa, AM ke PM. So now I akan tunjukkan semua tu. 
Okay. So now kat sini contoh soalan ni. I dah buat ini short answer, ini paragraph. Sekejap eh. Oh, sorry. Okay. So sini ada short answer, sini ada paragraph, sini ada multiple choice. So user boleh pilih daripada satu, check box user, uh, sorry. Multiple choice, user pilih satu. Check box question, user pilih lebih daripada satu. Ada drop down. Okay, file upload, linear scale, multiple choice, check box, date and also time. So let me show you satu-satu apa yang user akan nampak. So macam mana nampak um, short answer tu dia punya panjang, dia punya box yang dia boleh terima soalan tu dia pendek je. And then untuk paragraph dia lagi panjang. So tu je beza dia. But both actually you boleh uh, even though short answer question pun you still boleh key in panjang-panjang. Okay, you still can key in long answer. You don't have to worry even though the question said short answer question you can still key in long um, means like a long answer. Okay, it just if you notice it's just the box. So it's small and then for paragraph it will be longer. As for the multiple choice like I said user can only choose one. Multiple choice user can only choose one. Check box question user can choose more than one. Check box question user can choose more than one. For the drop down again user can choose only one. From the option given user can choose only one. Okay drop down is just when you click user choose only one. File upload question user click at file and then um, from their drive or also from their computer they can select anything. So I'm going to upload a, a screenshot. So just give me a moment here. Okay here. Okay William. Upload. Okay user can upload straight from the drive or also from their computer. So here is the file I upload. Okay. Here is the linear scale. So user can only choose one. So here is the most less will be very desertified. So this one is the most, so very satisfied. So the user just choose whatever uh, grade they want to give, let's say three. So here multiple choice grade. So here the first question, here will be the second question. So here is uh, represent like this one, like the number. First one, the second one, third and fourth, okay. So let's say row one, you just choose column one. With row two, you also choose column two. So here you can choose only one for each row okay this is row this is column so here multiple choice grid you can choose only one but if you go check spot grid question user can choose more than one okay for check spot grid question user can choose uh, more than one so again it depends on what type of response that you allow the user okay so if you if you allow user to answer to choose more than one, go ahead check box great question. But if you want the user to decide choose only one, you can choose multiple choice great question. So it will looks like this. Okay. So for the date, user just click here. So a mini calendar will come up. So just choose the date. For the time option AM PM, and then just key in the time. Okay, just key in the time and then that's it. For the type of question, is there any 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 question or something that you are unclear or you want to know more about? Just let me know. So everybody okay with that? Okay, so that is for type of question. So again, it's depend on you what kind of answer that you need from the user. Okay. Either you want them to type, if you want them to type, you have short answer question and paragraph question. If you want them to choose, they have multiple choice, they have check box and also drop down. If you want them to upload, you use file upload. Okay, if you want them to uh, grade you to scale, so you can use scale type of question. So you have three, linear scale question, multiple choice grid question, check box grid question. Okay, there's three type and also you have date and time.
what is the length for short okay so for the length um actually is there's a none okay there is none but you can set it up i will show you as well it's part of our class today okay uh, okay it's also a uh, uh, part of the class today for saravanan okay, let me just go up uh, kalau soal selidik lebih satu soalan okay if your uh, if you question more than one question then use multiple choice grade question okay since you are saying that uh, borang kaji selidik tu lebih daripada satu soalan so i will say use multiple choice grade question so yang ni so this is sini soalan satu soalan dua soalan tiga soalan empat Okay, guna multiple choice gate. Sebab yang ni sesuai if you nak tanya sekali saja. But since uh, since your question akan jadi repetitive nanti, so better gunakan multiple choice gate question. Okay, yang this one. So next question, so wait ya. Yeah. How to let them upload a picture? Okay, to let them upload a picture like this one, you are using, um, you are using this one, file upload. Okay. When you are choosing file upload, so nanti later on in the question, it will come out like this. Okay, it will come out like this. So user need to click add file and then they just choose for that particular file. Okay, they just choose for that particular file and then nanti the, later on it will come out like this one. This is the name of the file. Okay, this is the name of the file. Once they click submit, so now I'm clicking submit. Okay. When you have that type of uh, question, which is uh, file upload, in your in your drive, you will uh, automatically have this one. Okay, you will automatically have a folder created for you. So whenever people send something, uh, whenever people upload something in there, so you will be able to view the uh, file. So this is the one that I just upload, frame.png, if you notice. So here is the file. So here is the name of the file and also the name of the people who send the file. So later on, even though 10 people send the name of frame, okay, send, the, send you the same uh, type, I mean like name of the, of the file, okay. And then later on, it followed by the name of the sender, the one who filling up the form. So that's why it come out like this one, my name. Okay, that's why it's come out like this one, my name. So the name of the file followed by the name of the uh, sender. So next up, Pridya. Okay, so I will proceed with the next one. Uh, all correct question, I will answer later. Okay, so this one. How can you duplicate, import and copy a form? Okay, duplicate means that you are duplicating a question. So to duplicate, so you just click on this uh, button. This is the question. Okay, this is the question that I want to duplicate, short answer question. Click here, duplicate. Okay, the icon will uh, beside the bin to delete. Okay, once you click duplicate, this question will be duplicate. So if you notice now, short answer question, short answer question means that this files already duplicate that is for duplicate so now if you want to import questions okay let's say i'm creating a new form so this is my new form sample and i want to import question from another form okay i want to import a question from another form because i already asked this type of question before example but in different form. Now, I want to import that, import that question. To do that, you are looking for this button. So below the plus sign, here you will notice import questions. Okay, below the plus sign, there's an import question. Just click on that, import questions. So here you choose the form where you want to import the question form. Okay. So, I want to import a question from a form here using Google Form. Okay, here is the name of the form. Okay, you click and then just click select. Well, you can search here. You can just key in. So, uh, they will uh, display you all the form available for you. 
Okay, you can search from the list here and then just click and select. And after that, you will notice this box will come out on your left side of your Google Form. Okay, this is my Google Form. This will come out on your right side. So on the top here will be the name of the form. Okay, so that you can check is it from the correct form. So here will be the name of the form. And then here, okay, here will be list of question from the form. You have option. If you choose select all, they will import all question from this form. Okay, they will import all question from this form. And for my example here, I'm just going to choose one which is a paragraph questions. Okay, so I click here on the paragraph questions. Okay, here paragraph question and I just click import questions. So now as you can see here, paragraph question. This one is import from this file. Paragraph questions. Okay, so paragraph question I import to my sample form. So here is the question. So let me just show you how can you import. So you're looking for this uh, button. So it's below the plus, okay, add question, import question. Click on that. Look for your form. So I'm choosing a form. Okay, so here, the name of the form. Okay, can we ensure it's the correct form where you want to import your questions? So it's from this one. Using Google Form to collect available data. So just choose the question. So I'm going to choose this one. Multiple choice grid question. You can choose more than one or if you click uh, here, it will select all. Okay. So now I'm just going to choose one. Uh, checkbox grid questions. I'm going to choose two. Okay. Multiple choice grid question, checkbox grid question. I'm going to import two questions. So it should import these two. Multiple choice grid question. And also check spot grid question. It will import these two. So now let's do it. Here, click on import question. Now if you go down, here, you have multiple choice grid question. You have the check box grid question. It's copied from this one. Multiple choice, check spot grid. Okay, it will be here. So you don't have to copy paste, so it will be here. Okay. That is for import a uh, questions. Okay, I will go back. So now, oh, sorry. Okay, this is question important. So now to uh, duplicate, uh, duplicate the entire form, make a copy of the form. So what you need to do, you just right click on the form. Okay, right click on the existing form that you want to make a copy of it. Okay, just right click on that. For example, here I'm, uh, I right click on the using Google form to collect variable data. Right click and then choose make a copy. And then copy created, it will uh, rename, not rename, it will add copy of. Okay, in the beginning of the duplicate form. It will become like this copy of using Google Form to collect valuable data. Okay, keep in mind when you duplicate a form, it, it will be shared with the same uh, with the same people that the original, like the original form. Okay, it will copy whoever you are sharing the file with. It will also when you creating a copy, it will also be shared with the same people. Okay, it will also be shared with the same people. Whenever you duplicate a file, it will also be shared with the same people. So here, copy of and then the name followed by the name of the file. Uh, I, okay, uh, I noticed there's a question, but then I guess I will get back to you guys. Okay, because I want to just to show you first what can we do with our form. And then later on, if you have any questions, just type in. Uh, Towards the end, I will show you, uh, I will answer you one by one. So that is for duplicate uh, duplicate, and also how can we import a question 
and how can we copy our form okay duplicate import and copy a form okay import questions copy a form so now how can we set rules for the form okay you can set rules for the form and then that's mean our respondent have to follow the rules when they're filling up the form for example if you ask them to fill up an email address that means they need to key in a valid email address in order for them to submit the file. Else, they cannot submit the uh, the form. Okay. To set this up, okay. Um, first, first oh, this one is required. Okay, sorry. This one is required because uh, means that um, Google Form will not allow any submission without receiving any answer for the required questions. So required is a must. They must uh, they must answer this question else this form will not be submitted. To do that in the questions, okay, in the questions. So here is the questions. Sorry, wait, yeah. So here is the question. You need to turn on this button. You need to turn on this button and then when you notice this is the question, they have asterisk. Uh, they have asterisk at the end of the question. So means that this question is required. It's a must. They must answer this question else this form will not be submitted. Okay, to turn it on. So here is the question. So here is the question. So when you notice required, you just need to turn on this button. Click on that. Okay, click and then that's it. You notice in your question, this uh, question is required. User cannot submit if they did not answer this. If It's fine if they did not answer paragraph question, but if they leave short answer question empty, okay, Google Form will reject their submission. Okay, they will set error. So now, um, set of rules. Okay, you can set up set of rule, however, it's only available for these three type of question. Short answer, paragraph, and also checks box. Okay. Each question type allows response uh, validation as a different setting. Okay. These three have a different setting. For short answer, you can set number. You can set text, length, and regular expression. For the paragraph, you can set up length and regular expression. For the checks box. You can choose select at least, select at most, select exactly. Okay, I will show you now for the short answer. Okay, how can we set rules? If you are in this, uh, only in this three type of question, keep in mind. For others, they don't have this option, only for these three. So now for the short answer, if you click on the three dot for more option, okay, it will lock it there. We set required, so there's a three dot for more option for this particular question, which is short answer. You want to click on respond validation. Okay, we're going to set up rules now. Click on respond validation for this type of question. Respond validations. And then it will come out like this one. So you can choose uh, for this you can choose type of rule that you want. Again, for short answer, you have number, text, length, and regular expression. Okay, what does it mean? For example, here, number. For example, here, number for short answer. You also have option here. You can set greater than, greater than, or equal to, less than, less than, or equal to, equal to, not equal to, between, not between, is number, whole number. For my example here, I'm going to show you greater than, okay? We are going to use number greater than. So, I put 90, uh, 89, okay, 89. Means that the condition that I set here, the number must be greater than 89. Okay, the number that key in by user must be greater than uh, 89. Okay, the number must be great, not must be greater than 89. Here on your right side, okay, you can type an error message that people, that user will see when they enter an answer that breaks the rules. Okay, so here there's a box for you to key in the error that will come out when the uh, user 
answer didn't meet the requirement. Okay, for example, it is not greater than 89, I will just say too low. Okay, I will just say too low. For example here, when I key in 2 and I try to submit, it will become like this one, too low. It will not allow me to submit unless I fix this error, then only I can submit. If I key in 90, that's mean I can send. But if I key in lower than 89, it will not accept. So this is the error message that I set up, too low. That is for number. Okay, here. Show you here. Okay, I'm going to put it required. And then short answer. Okay, you're looking for this button, more. Respond validation. Again, there's only three. Okay, three type of question that uh, available for this one. Respond validation. Number greater than. Okay, this is uh, bigger than 89. Just going to use 89 again. I'm just going to put wrong. Okay, required. So number greater than 89. If it's not greater than 89, uh, they will uh, receive an error message said it's wrong. Now preview. So here you can see there's an asterisk because this question is required. So now let's say I want I key in it, click on submit. So here is the error message wrong. Okay, so that is for number. It is for number. Now for text. Okay, for text here, you can decide as well for the text is the content, does it content? If you want it to key in a valid email address, choose email address, okay? And then also if you want it to be URL, choose URL. For my demo here, I'm going to make sure that it's a valid email address. So I choose email address. And then I key in the uh, error message, not a valid email address. So when I key in uh, just a normal word without a gmail.com, without a yahoo.com, okay, so it will say not a valid email address. It will follow the error that I set up here. So I, I cannot submit. So here, let's just do it again. Close this one, leave. Yeah. So I'm going to add. Another question, short answer as well. Oops. So here again, more respond validation. I'm going to go ahead, choose text, email address. This is not an email. Just going to put email required. Okay. So now preview. So this is how users um, will look at the form. So here if I say hello, submit, you can see it will say this is not a well, this is not an email. It will follow your error. So let's say here only if I do this, okay, there will not be an error because they read this one. They need to ensure it's at gmail.com. Okay, it will ensure that user key in at gmail.com else it will uh, say this is an error. That is for email address. So now for the length. For the length, this one you can choose a maximum and also minimum character count. Okay, you can set up the minimum and also a maximum character count. Let's say here I put in a minimum character count. I put in 100. Please key in more than 100 character. Okay. For example here, I just key in my name is Katie. So of course it's less than 100 character. It will give me an error. Please key in more than 100 character because it follow my error message here. Okay. That is for the length. So now for the regular expression. For the regular expression, so this one actually, uh, if uh, if you want to put in more uh, custom, like uh, custom rules, if you want to put in uh, custom rules, you can use regular expression. 
For example, here, I'm going, uh, they have content, a dozen, dozen content, match and doesn't match. Again, this one, you need to refer to a formula. Okay, for my case here, I'm going to put a regular expression, content. So, okay, I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah. So here, short answer. S1 validation, regular expressions. Okay. Let's see. So here I put it rules. So uh, it must be a capital letter between A to Z. So this one, it must start with uh, either A to Z and it must be capital letter. So that's the rules that I set up here. If you want to look at for more rules, you can look for, uh, yeah, you can look here. I'll just share with you. Okay, I'll, uh, okay here, I'll just share with you. So here is for rules for the expression that you can use. Okay, you can use this one. So for now, I'm going to use uh, this expression that I'm using here. Okay. It's for me to ensure that the first letter must be capital. The rules that I'm using here as my example, okay, it must it must uh, start with capital. So that's the rules that I'm setting up. Okay, that's the rules that I'm setting up. So, okay, here. It must uh, start with A to Z. Okay. And then here is, uh, just say capital, this name. Okay, so here I just preview. If I key in start by number, it will also show me um, a problem here. So it, so let's say I put it a small one, a capital one. So this one here. Uh, like I share with you guys in the link. So you have a lot of rules there. Okay, you have a lot of rules there. So here for my rules, it must be a capital letter. It must be a capital because when I uh, when I key in without the capital, it will give me error. Okay, it will give me error. So for the uh, regular expression, so there's a few options available for you. Okay, you must know the syntax that you want to use. Okay, you must use the syntax that you want to use and then you can set up the rules. Once you understand the syntax here, you can set up the rules by your own. So here in between A to Z or if you want it to be capital, that's why I'm using A to Z in capital because I want to ensure that the one that uh, key in by user must be from capital. So here you can have a look at different different type of syntax okay so the one is for regular expressions so now for the paragraph i will not show you because it's the same with the short one they only have length and regular expression they doesn't have number okay they doesn't have numbers like the one here okay they don't have the numbers and text for the paragraph, they only have length and regular expression. Okay. For the paragraph, they only have length and regular expression. So it's the same here where you can set it up for the paragraph. As for the checkbox, okay, as for the checkbox, they have option, they have this option. Select at least, you can set, here we are. Here, see, I'm going to quit new one checkbox, checkbox. Okay, so here, respond validation. Okay, select at least. Let's say the user need to select at least uh, two. 
choose more. Okay, now let's preview. If user select only one, okay, they will come out, choose more because I need them to choose two. If they choose two, there will be no error. So another one, at most, uh, at most two. So now if I preview, okay, if I choose uh, three, okay, sorry, I didn't change the error, but if I choose three, it will say error because I said choose uh, select at most two. So the maximum they can choose is two. If it's more than two, it will give them error. So now select exactly. So it cannot be less, it cannot be more. It must be two. So I will suggest here you uh, clear it, uh, make it more clearer by, uh, by saying pick two. So here, they must pick two, okay? Pick two. If they, uh, they choose more than two, error. If they choose less than two as well, there will be an error. So for that one, set rules, you can only use for three. Short answer, paragraph answer, and chat box type of answer. It's only available for these three because if you try it out for other type of question, it's not available for them, okay? Okay, the response validation is not available for others. It's only available for those three. Short answer paragraph, uh, answer, and also the checks box. Uh, so this one is, uh, again, the features in Google Drive, uh, sorry, the features in Google Form, it depends on whatever purpose that you created the form. Okay, it depends on the purpose why you created the form and also the type of information that you want to gather from your respondent. Okay, here in the settings. So this, this is your Google form. Go to your settings. So in the general setting, you have option to enable collect email address. So when you tick this one, so this form will automatically collect user email address. Okay, you don't have to ask them what is your email address. It will automatically collect the email address. And then you have option, you must use enable collect email address to use the, uh, the mini option, respond receipt. Okay, response receipt. So when you tick this one, you, when you enabling respond receipt, so when someone submit the form, they will receive a copy to their email address. Okay, they will receive a copy to their email address. Uh, regarding uh, the one that they fill up, the form that they're filling up, they will also receive a copy that will be sent to their email address. And then you have option that um, if you want to limit only to one response, means that one user, one, un one, uh, one email address can only respond once. One email address can only respond one. And then you have additional option, uh, either user can edit after their submit or also user can view the summary of your uh, of your form. Okay, so this one is optional for you if you want to allow the user. So you just tick on that. This is for the general setting. For the presentation setting, here I will to highlight about the confirmation message. Okay, confirmation message, if you notice here when I submit, yeah, which one? Let's just go here. Review. Submit. Okay. Your responses has been recorded. So this message, you can change in the settings. Here. Here. Go to your settings. Okay, go to your settings here. Beside send. Like a gear icon. Presentation. So here, confirmation message is the one that will be shown. Your response has been recorded. By default, it will become like that. Your response has been recorded. You can change the message there. Okay, whenever someone click submit, they will see this box. So this is the title of the form. This is your message. And this is the option. If you allow them to answer more than one, 
Okay, they will have option submit another response. If they can answer more than one, they have this option. But if they don't, they will not see this option. Submit another response. Okay, because I didn't limit to one. So um, people can just uh, answer the uh, form more than one time. So again here, your response has been recorded. So it will be shown here. So you can customize this. Okay, you can customize this in the settings in the presentation part right here. So now you just, once you made the changes, don't forget to click save because in the setting, you must click save. Even though working on the form doesn't require you to click on the save button, but here, uh, when you're working on the setting, you must click on the save. Okay, so here, if you want to turn your form into quizzes, you go to quizzes and just turn it on. Now, sharing the Google form, when you click send, okay, so here will be the send button, the purple button. Just key in your email address. First option, via email. So you just key in the user, the respondent key, uh, email address here and just click send. So here will be the subject. Okay, subject. By default, it will follow the form title. Your subject, you can change it, but by default, it will follow the form title for the subject. And then key in the message and click send. You can also copy uh, the URL and share it via WhatsApp. Okay, here, yeah, link. And then embed HTML. If you, are, if you are having a website and you want to uh, include your form part of your website, you can also copy the HTML here. If you want to add collaborators, so collaborators will be the person who can edit the form. Okay, not only answering the question, but collaborators will be the person who will be able to edit your form. To add collaborators, click on here. There's a menu button. Besides send, there's a menu button. Add collaborators. And you can just key in their email address and then just send them the invitation to collaborate with you. Uh, for any question, I will show you at the end of the class because I want to show you guys we haven't entered the generate QR code yet. Okay, so here you just key in their email address and then click done. So the user, the collaborator can just key in um, any new question into the form. Okay, collaborator. So collaborator and also use uh, respondent is totally different. So can you ensure what type of access that you want to give? If you want to give the person um, access to edit the form, use add collaborators. If that person only to fill up the form, use send. Okay, click send button and not add collaborators. So now the generate QR code because we already feeling, uh, we already created our form. So now we want to generate a QR code for, for it. So then people can just scan the code and then it will bring them direct to the form. So how to do that? So first option will be add on. First option will be add on. So again, click on this menu button where you can add collaborator just now. Click on here, choose add ons. Okay, there are two. Uh, okay, when you go to add on, Kindly key in QR code here and press this button to search. Okay. Okay. Because you will see a lot of options, but what you need to do now, okay, type in QR code here on the box here and then click this button to search. The result, there will be two uh, result for the QR code. When you key in QR code, there will be two result. The first one will be QR code maker by GOC. Okay, but currently that one is not accessible. And then the second option, you have a QR code generator by 2H Studio. So that's the one that I'm going to show you. Okay, for this one. So done, QR code. And then the only two options. So apparently the first one is uh, currently they're still working on fixing the error because you cannot use it. Now you can only choose the second one, which is QR code generator. 
click on the QR code generator and then click install. So you just install the uh, add-on. After you install that add-on here from your form again, you are looking for like a puzzle icon on the very uh, left side. Okay. Yeah, there's a puzzle icon. Click on that and then choose the choose QR code generator. Okay, after you install here on the left side, I get add on button. Click on that, you have option QR code generator. Once you click on that, it will uh, it will give you um, it will bring you to this page. Okay, it's not page, it will pop up. Okay. It will pop up like this one and then your QR code will be on the top here. However, if you wish to use this one, they have limitation. You can use it up to 15 times. So when you first use, you will notice that the credit left, it will show you the credit number of credit left. It will show you the number of credit left will be 14. Because in total, there will be 15. So when you first use it, as you can see, the number will be 14 because you already use it once. Okay, in total, you can use it 15 times. Please keep in mind, even though you open up the QR code generator for the same form, okay, even though you open up the QR code generator for the same form, it will deduct your credit. Let's say here, I already open up, I close it, and then I open again, okay, and then I open again the QR code generator, it will deduct your credit. Okay, it will deduct your credit, and then here, I just click on copy to clipboard, it will generate me here, my QR code, okay? When I paste it, it will generate me my QR code. So it looks like this one. So that one is limited, okay? That one is limited. So now, another option is to use qrcodegenerator.com. I will share with you guys. So this one is a lot easier okay this one is a lot easier no sign in required no sign in required at all so if you go to qr code generator so since this uh since this google form is a url if you notice so click on the url so go back to your google form i want you to copy this link so copy your google form link here copy and then just paste it here okay just paste it here this is okay this is the location so i just paste it there and then it will automatically generate my qr code it will automatically generate my qr code so here is my qr code so the first three design is uh, able for you and you doesn't require sign up Okay, this one, two, three. Okay, these three, if you choose, you doesn't require any sign up. You can choose it. But then if you choose the other, you need to log in. You need to sign up. But don't worry, sign up is free. Free sign up. Okay, free sign up. But of course, for more features, you need to pay. But then if you want to sign up, it's totally free. So here, this first three design is free you doesn't require any sign up but if you choose the others you need to join you need to sign up so now for example here i just choose this design i just click on download okay and then it will bring you here and then it will say your qr code is being generated so please do not refresh or exit it will take some time for them to generate but you just wait okay kindly wait for it and then once it's done it will automatically download you, there's no more, um, you only need to click the download button once. When you click on it, it will bring you to this page. And then once the download is done, you will receive a notification that uh, the file is downloaded. So here, for example, the downloaded file. Okay, this example for the downloaded form. Now let's just show you a demonstration, quick demonstration. So here, QR code generator. I'm just going to use a demo. Let's see which one are you? Here. 
Okay. Sun. Link. Copy. Okay. Link. Copy. Okay. Go back to here. QRCodeGenerator.com. Right click. Paste. So it's generating. So now here is my QR code. Again, the first three here, it's free. You doesn't to sign up. But if you choose the other one, you need to sign up. Okay. But here for this one, you doesn't need to sign up. Okay. Just click on download and then it will be downloaded into your computer. And then you just share it. Where uh, You just share the image. Okay, and then that's it. You just share the image. Oops. Now I will go to your question one by one. Welcome. Okay, which one I didn't answer yet? Okay, here. Can the file be noticed in your email? Hi, A, B. Um, so the answer for your question will be no. Okay, can the file be noticed in your email? No. When someone upload the file in the folder, you will not get any notification. Apparently, you uh, you cannot get any notification for now. So that's the rules. Uh, for now, we cannot set up any rules for that. So when someone uh, upload the file, you will not be noticed by an email. How to make a question compulsory to answer? Okay. So I I hope that I already answered your question, but just in case this is how you do it. To make it compulsory, you need to ensure that this button is on, required. In that particular question, you must ensure that it's on. Then only it will be asterisk, means that it's compulsory for the a user to answer this question. Yeah, you have, yes, uh, you have to choose the required option in every question. Yes, correct. Uh, thank you, Saravanan, for answer, uh, for answer the question for me. How to customize the confirmation in, uh, message? Yes, scan. So here, settings, presentation. So your response has been recorded. So this is the normal message. Uh, I think I'm just use this one. Because this one it's I'm going to remove this. I will make it shorter. Okay. So here, go to settings, presentation, confirmation and message. I will change it to smiley face. Save. Okay, I just change it to smiley face. If you notice here, confirmation message. Okay, now. When I click submit, the confirmation message will come out will be smiley face. Because I just set up there a smiley face. I didn't key in any text. Okay, so it will follow the one that you set up. So that is for confirmation message. How to resolve the request access need permission problem? Okay, request access need permission problem. So what uh, is it for the sharing function? Or is it if you want to uh, work together on that particular form? Okay, so for request access need permission, it will happen to any, it will happen to any type of file. Okay, the main reason why it request access need permission because this person didn't share the file with you. Okay, request access need permission problem because this person didn't share the file with you. For example, if you are trying to go into my slide here, okay, even though I share the link with you, you have the link. If you go into the link, it will say request access permission because I didn't share this file with you. Because I didn't share this file with you. To fix that, you need to request access and that person needs to give you access. Okay, to give you access, let's say here, to give you access, so this is just an example. It doesn't have to be an image. So this is the, the document you are talking about. So that person need to share. Okay, that person need to share with you that file. So click on the plus sign, just key in your, um, key in your email address. Try here. And then done. 
So means that that person need to give you access. So this is how another way they can do it. And they will also receive an email. Once you click on request access, the person will receive an email saying that this person request an access. So she or he can grant the access or deny the access. So to deny means like just to leave it. When they want to grant it, they need to um, invite you. Like what I show you just now, share email address and then click done and invitation will be sent. I hope that I answered your question. Okay, I already installed the QR code and how to find the Google. Okay, so to find it. So here. So you already installed the QR code generator. So just click on the QR code generator and then they will uh, ask you to choose your language. Currently, there's no Malay. Okay, currently there's no Malay. So we need to go to the English option. So you click on the English. And then there will just uh, come, there's a, there will be this kind of, sorry, wait. Okay. And then they will give you this kind of pages, okay, here. And then you can see your QR code on the top. Okay. What you need to do, you just click copy to clipboard and it just paste it anywhere. So for example, you are paste it here. So that's why the QR code is generated here. Okay, so you just click copy to kill, uh, to clipboard. And then that's it, it will be copied here. Okay, that is for the, if you install the QR code generator. Okay, if this one, if you go to qrcodegenerator.com, you just need to download. The QR code letak dalam borang yang kita cipta. Okay, I hope that I understand your question correctly. So you kata you nak letak QR code juga. I copy to clipboard yang ni eh. eh. Okay, so sekarang ni I ada QR code. So apa yang I, apa yang you kena buat, you kena letak add image. Okay, add image. You dah download kan tadi QR code daripada QR, uh, you dah download. So now let me just proceed. it. Yeah. I tengah upload gambar. So, yep. So, ni dah ada. I punya QR code. So, when people go to my form, so, orang pun boleh scan. So, I hope that I answer your questions correctly. If wrong, just let me know. Uh, Hillary. Okay. Boleh ke dikut? Uh, sorry. Uh, Kensu. Okay. Alright, I hope that I answer your question. If there is any other question yang I belum answer, do let me know. So, I dah answer semua ke? Alright, everybody good? No question? Alright, don't forget to fill up the form, the survey form before you leave the conversation. So, since there is no more questions. Okay. How to use the QR code. So here you already have the QR code and then instead of uh, giving people the URL, what you can do, people just scan the QR code and then they will bring them to this form. Okay. When you generate the QR code here, okay, here's the QR code. When someone scan the QR code, they will actually bring them to this form because this QR code is actually for this form. Okay, and you remember, so here I send. So here is the Q, this the link that I pasted here. Okay, and then I download this QR code. Okay, I download this QR code. So then you can share it uh, anywhere. Okay, for example here, I just share it again in my form. So when people scan it, it will bring to the URL, which is will bring them here. Here is the URL. Okay, here is the URL. Uh, you just open up, uh, open up your camera. 
Okay, you open up your camera or if you're using Android, I will suggest you download Lens. L E N S. Here. Uh, search for the from Android uh, from the Google Play. The name of the application will be Lens. If you open up Lens, you just scan. And then you will notice the URL suddenly available. So you just click on that and we will bring you straight to the form. Okay. If you are using uh, iOS, you just go to your camera and then your camera will detect the uh, the QR code and then uh, the link will available on the top. Can we, when we create Google Form, can we set where the form will be saved? Okay. Um, there's two way for you to do it or hunt. So there's two way, two way for you to do it. The first one, when you create the form, you create the form straight from the folder that you wish to, that you wish the form to be. For example, I want the form to be here. Yo, so means that you create the form straight from here. Okay, you create the form straight from here. Let's say you already created the form and then only notice that, oh, wrong place, okay? The other way you can do it here, beside your uh, beside your form name, okay, there's a folder, move to folder, okay? This one is allowed you to move this form to a different folder. Just click on that. So here you can choose the desired folder click and then just click move. It will be moved to that particular folder. There's two way. Either you create, so in the uh, in the beginning, you create from the particular folder or if you do it by accident, so here you still can move to a different folder. Okay, are you okay? Any other Questions? Are you guys not clear with? Welcome. You guys okay? No questions? All good? All clear? Okay. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. So now I will be leaving the conversation. Thank you very much for joining my class and hope you have a good day ahead. Thank you and see you again next time.